Here are six things I've learned from losing in Forex. What's good liquidity gang? So here are six things that I've learned from losing in Forex. Obviously there's a lot more than six things that you've learned from your losses, but these are just some of the things that I wanna to bring to your attention because I think it might benefit you guys in your Forex journey. Also finally, this video was recorded a few weeks back and for some reason the camera kept going out of focus, in focus, out of focus, in focus. So if you can look over that, then you'll get the nuggets from this video. And lastly guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The goal for this channel for this year is to reach 50, thousand subscribers so guys if you like the content if you're advising with all my videos so far hit the subscribe button and let's try and smash 400 likes in this video let's go all right finally so before we actually get into the video i thought i would share with you guys my most recent loss for some reason people think i don't take losses yes i take losses just like any other trader i do lose sometimes it's just that obviously with the trades that do win they catch all kinds of different r but when i lose i only lose one percent and i really encourage you guys you don't need to be trading more than one percent per trade some people do two percent don't do five percent per trade don't do none that stuff because you'll blow your account a lot quicker so guys i wanted to quickly show you guys one of my most recent losses and it was no big deal because i already won a few other trades but this trade here was a gold trade i thought it was quite clean i'm gonna throw my annotations real quick so you guys can see what i was looking at i'm gonna break it down for you quickly then get into those six things i've learned from losing let's put my annotations on so as you can see what we had here was that we had equal highs you see these highs they were equal highs even though this one just went just slightly just above it for me it's still equal highs or relative equal highs i seen price had traded above that took all the stop losses took all the buy stops and then what it did is it then broke to the downside and just like i said in my previous video you see this low over here do you see how it just gets beneath the low as you can see so in other words what do we have we have a wick break and wick breaks are still breaks just don't 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 believe that wick breaks are good enough they're still breaks another thing i've marked up here is the up close candle that ran the rest of that liquidity on top and so that was going to be my reference point i wanted to see price respond off of that level price responded off of the up close candle this was still a high risk entry but i got in just a little bit late now when i go down the time frame i'm going to show you guys where i actually got stopped out okay cool so i've gone down the time frame now so now i'm going to show you guys the entry itself so first of all what you can see is that here's the up close candle from this low to this high that mitigated this one over here so when price broke the low of this this low right here and started retracing up i managed to jump in this trade when price was right here you know when price was pushing down with these down close candles this is where i jumped in the trade i put my stop loss right at the high but i got stopped out my stop loss was way too tight what i should have done is i should have put my stop loss above one of these wicks and you know that would survive and then you guys probably have seen if i go back to the um to the 10 minute time frame they did provide you with a low risk entry and um, i was watching the trade at the time so i didn't catch it so the low risk entry would have been when price broke this low over here and retraced back up into the last up close candle i just showed you that would have been the entry and then you could have caught the lowest sell to this point and i was specifically targeting this point because there was a down close candle here i was targeting just beneath 50 percent where most of the volume is and so basically this was my most current loss i was going for a seven put stop loss when i should have done a 10 put stop loss and your boy got taken out cool let's get right back to the video all right family what's good liquidity gang so today we're going to be talking about six things i've learned from losing in forex this actually once again derived from a comment that one of my subscribers dropped i remember it way back and i said i was going to do a video on it and it was basically just sharing my thoughts on losing trades so number one is is losses will happen. I want you all to accept the fact that losses will happen. Every single person loses the forex. People are going to be going on winning streaks. They might go for three winning trades, five, ten winning trades, but eventually you're going to come across a loss. The only way you're going to actually win all the time in forex is if you was the person who designed the whole market. And I'm pretty sure you weren't. So you should be expecting losses to happen. I speak to so many different traders. Some of them like to admit this and some of them don't. Their analysis will be just on point but because they were afraid to lose the trade they ended up not taking the trade and then that trade absolutely banged and went through the roof the issue stems from the fact that they were afraid to lose money guys another quick note as well if you're afraid to lose money then forex ain't for you I'm just letting you know if forex ain't for you number two there will always be another setup so I found that this one hits deep. Do you know why? Because this one really affected me in my earlier days of trading. There'll be so many different times where I would take a loss and then price will move in the direction I wanted it to go. And then the crazy thing was I would see it moving in my direction, but then for some reason I'll start believing that this trade was never gonna come back. I just believe that price would never come back, that if I miss this opportunity today, I'm not gonna get it. I miss gold, I miss GP, USD, I miss all these different pairs. 
and then I'll be having to enter at the dodgy prices instead of waiting for price to come to me. And so what I decided to do is even though price was at a high, I'll still be buying. My stop loss was about to be absolutely dead, I'll still be looking to buy. I'll be in that trade and holding that trade and holding that trade and guess what would happen? Price would technically come right back to my entry and then take off again. But we know as traders who trade smart money and institutional concepts that price needs to come back from mitigation anyway. Don't ever believe that there would never be another opportunity. There will always be countless opportunities in this forex market. Let's move on to number three. Oh, this is another one that hit deep. Don't add to losing positions. I know you guys have been doing this. I know you ladies have been doing this. Whenever you're losing, you're adding to losing positions. Whoever this guy is, he's talking some truth. We have it so twisted, we have it so backwards. What some people do is they add to their losing positions. And then what would normally happen is when price goes against them some more, their account is fully blown and it's game over for them. What we should do is we should have the mentality of Adding to our winning positions. This guy's talking some truth. And number four is don't give up on trading because you're losing. So one of the things about trading is that, especially when you first start learning now, is you're gonna be taking multiple, many losses. You're gonna be blowing accounts. You're gonna be losing a lot. You might be losing more than you're winning, but don't base your trading off of those earlier days. Those earlier days are the days when you're learning the market. If I could go all the way back to when I first started trading or learning how to trade, one of the main things I would do differently is I won't touch any live accounts. Just to give you guys a quick story, when I first started trading, I went through a whole educational platform in one week and then the second week I was trading. It was mostly taking signals, but I was still trading at the time. And my second week, I managed to double my account. I was so gassed so happy, I was singing the praises, all of that stuff. And then guess what, the following week, I blew my whole account. And so that was one of the worst times Psychology was knocked out of the park. If I could go all the way back, I would not touch a live account. I'll put my all into learning the concepts, learning how to trade Forex, learning the opinions of the markets, learning the mindset, learning all of these different things about trading before touching any live account. I would have back tested, which is something I didn't do, and then I would have full tested too. Number five is if you blow an account, don't top it up straight away. So family, I can't tell you the countless amount of times that I've done blown an account and then I topped it up instantly. What would normally happen after that actually is I would then blow that account and then top it up instantly again. And it just became a cycle of blowing accounts and topping it up instantly and blowing accounts and topping it up instantly. What you need to do after you blow an account is you want to take a little bit of a break. You want to take a breather. You want to take your eyes off the charts after you've gone through why you've taken those losses. Because real talk, you need to deep why you took those losses. Maybe you had FOMO. Maybe you jumped in at the wrong price. Maybe you rushed into this. Maybe you didn't understand the concepts. Maybe you didn't know what you was doing. Maybe you was gambling. Maybe you wasn't thinking straight. Maybe your psychology was out the window. There could have been a number of things that were happening that could have caused you to lose those trades. And so this is why it's so important not to just top it up straight away. You need some time to take in while you're losing trades and to try and correct those things. And number six, this one's a little bit deep, man. I'm pretty sure you guys can resonate with this as well. Don't allow your losses to affect your mood for the day, to affect what you do externally. I can bring my wife here right now and she can tell you about all the times that I've allowed my losses to affect my day. There'll be times when I've had a losing streak, there'll be times when I've lost a trade or lost multiple trades or I didn't get the trade I wanted to and then I would allow it to affect my mood. And then what would happen is whatever I'm doing externally, let's just say we're gonna go shopping or we're going out for, an er we're doing an errand or something like that, I'd be trying to rush that, I wouldn't be fully focused. There was even one time I didn't even want to eat. I didn't even want to eat one time. I just wanted to try and get some wins in. It's vitally important to not allow trading, your trading losses to affect your mood. I know it's tough, I know it's hard. You need to be able to remove yourself from that moment and not allow that to mesh in with what's happening externally. Don't allow it to affect your emotions. Don't allow it to affect your connection with other people. Don't allow it to get into your relationships because eventually that will just put you in a state where whenever you lose, you're just, you're just off and then no one can talk to you and you can't get on with your day. Anyway family, those are the six things that I've learned from losing. If you resonate with any of those, drop it in the comment. Peace.